Today on Rescue USA. As wildfires rage in one Northern California town, unlikely heroes step up to rescue their community. Go, 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 go. There's fire everywhere. It's all around us and we realize that we're not gonna be able to get out. They're completely relying on me and my skills to get them out of this situation. These heroes do whatever they could to save the lives of their patients and themselves. Find out how complete strangers risk their own safety to save the lives of those trapped in the roaring wildfires. Fueled by ferocious winds and really dry conditions, California's campfire erupted quickly, but then moved even faster than anyone could have imagined, tearing through the picturesque town of Paradise. Though tragedy would engulf this entire peaceful mountain community, heroes would emerge and they would stand tall in the face of the inferno. Nestled in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains sits the Northern California town of Paradise. With blue skies, verdant forests, and rolling hills, Paradise truly lives up to its name. It's a very outdoorsman type place. Family and friends uh, is what I've always known about uh, Paradise. There's a ton of swimming holes everywhere you go. You could ride your bikes out till dark time in a group of little mob of kids and you felt safe. It's a very tight-knit community and it was a joy growing up here. And on the morning of November 8th, that sense of community, of neighbor helping neighbor, well, it wouldn't just be a way of life. It would be a way of saving lives. It started out as a routine work day for labor and delivery nurse Tamara Ferguson. I started my shift at Feather River Hospital like any other day. One of my night shift coworkers was leaving and said, did you guys notice that there's an orange glow outside? And a few of us walked outside and we looked and it looked pretty far away. So we kind of just went back to doing our business. Early that morning, pediatrician David Russell also noticed something on the horizon. So I went and told my wife, hey, it looks like there's a fire. So we need to check, see if there's any information on it. No information. So I said, you know, I'll go to work. Brett Harles and his wife, Heather Robach, were going into delivery that morning with their second child. With her upcoming C-section, they really had little time to think of anything else. We were really happy at the beginning of the day, starting out knowing that you're gonna get to meet your daughter. What no one yet knew was that 6.30 that morning, a wildfire ignited off Camp Creek Road in Pulgas, California, just seven miles away. Called the campfire, this inferno was now racing toward paradise. The campfire raged due to a number of factors. Long-term drought meant there was a highly combustible brush on the hillside. There was also low humidity and high winds. These dry winds not only stoked the flames, but they sent burning embers into the sky, and that caused additional spot fires to ignite. These high-risk factors made it extremely difficult for firefighters to contain the wildfire. In just an hour and a half, the campfire was literally right outside the doors of Feather River Hospital. We started to smell smoke in the hallway, and then somebody called overhead, code triage, code triage. My manager was at the desk, and I said, is this real? Are we, what's going on? She said, yes, it's real. Go tell your patients, go get them ready. <coughs> Holly was born at 8 o'clock, exactly. And then about probably 8 to 10 minutes after she was born, doctors were coming down the hallway saying that everyone's got to leave. We're evacuating the fires around the hospital. And there's still a sense of calmness, but a confusion. And within five minutes, it went from that to get your patients now and run towards the emergency room. Oh. Then one of our administrators came running into the unit, just banging on doors. And everybody out, everybody out. They moved us out into the hallway. It was just sheer terror and panic. 
To make matters worse, Heather was unable to walk after just having had a C-section. So she was taken by Gurney to the emergency room exit. There, she joined the rest of the patients and hospital personnel. The question now, how to safely evacuate all the patients from the hospital? Medical professionals are trained to handle emergency situations, but in this case, they really had to rely on quick thinking and instincts. I helped put patients into cars and ambulances and police cars were driving up and anywhere that we could put somebody, we put someone. They moved me from a gurney to a backboard and slid me on the bench seat where the paramedics usually sit. There was a sheriff who had said that they had room for two in their vehicle and our nurse quickly said, right here I have this baby and the father. We can get in the car and, and go with you. Once everyone was loaded, Dr. Russell jumped in his truck and followed the caravan out of the parking lot. But with the fire raging all around them, they soon ran into an even more frightening dilemma. I started driving, but soon ran into traffic, just bumper to bumper, which never happens in paradise. There's 27,000 people just within paradise, and then more people who live outside in the unincorporated area, up to about 45,000 people. Putting that many people on the road was gonna be a very difficult situation because the roads will easily clog. And as the roads easily clog, they knew that people would be starting to suffer fire coming over the top of them in their evacuation corridors. Go, 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 go. So I turned my lights and siren on. While I'm traveling up Skyway with my lights and siren on, I was almost hit head on by a vehicle that was coming down Skyway. I, I thought to myself, uh-oh, this is a, a, a very bad scenario. I looked out the back of the ambulance that I was in and I just saw flames in front of me, just bright, bright flames all around me. I heard traffic say the ambulance in front of us was on fire. But it was kind of the first moment that I thought, are we gonna die here? New mom Heather was inside the burning ambulance. There's fire everywhere. It's all around us. There's nowhere for us to go, and the ambulance dies. And she starts it up again and revs the engine, and it dies again. Heather's husband, Brett, had made it to safety. But now Heather had to make a heartbreaking phone call to him. I had just told him that there was fire all around. My ambulance and my ambulance died. And then, uh, I just loved him so much. And then I love our kids so much, and I'm just so sorry that I'm not going to be with them anymore. And oh, no, I'm making it out of there. Dr. Russell was trapped in that gridlock. He made a frantic call to his brother, who happens to be a California firefighter. And his brother advised him that his only chance was to leave his vehicle and make a run for it. There are embers raining down on me. So I covered my head with a towel, started running down the road. When I looked up, I saw an ambulance with its back doors open. The patient inside, Heather, was saying, hey, get me out, get me out, the ambulance is on fire. Dr. Russell helped an EMT pull Heather out of that burning vehicle, but their horrifying nightmare was only just beginning. I thought there was absolutely no way that I was gonna get out of this fire. There was no way, it was too fierce, it was too fast. On the morning of November 8th, a fast-moving wildfire swept through the town of Paradise, California. The campfire was chasing everybody out within an hour and a half. Getting hot. But while they were fighting to escape the fire, first responders were heading straight into the inferno. Unfortunately, this day, it was gonna be historic for Paradise because the fire was spotting rapidly and it was moving over the top of Paradise. The people of Paradise were fighting to escape. But with the fast-moving firestorm, they had little time to do anything but jump in their cars and try to get to safety. Preparation is the key to surviving a natural disaster and can mean the difference between life and death. Go back, go back. With escape routes clogging, Officer Wilkie's main focus was to keep the roads clear for evacuation. I ended up driving in culverts and ditches in my patrol car, trying to get around traffic just to find out what was causing the traffic jams. Officer Wilkie's girlfriend, Tamara, and the rest of her group were still trapped in the blazing inferno. 
And I said, okay, if I'm gonna die right here, I'm gonna do everything I can to protect these patients. Their only hope was to find refuge in a nearby house that was still standing. I look in there, kicking down someone's gate, broke into the garage, and they drag me up the driveway and in. After moving the patients into the garage, Tamara approached a fire chief. I said, what do I do? And he gave us all jobs. He said, you go over there and start sweeping. You fill up buckets with water. Do whatever you can so that it doesn't catch fire. Started hosing down the, the bushes and also the tree there to try to keep it from lighting the house on fire. And all I can see is smoke and fire and them running back and forth. Finally, after hours of fighting the blaze, a ray of hope. A fire truck was able to make their way to us, so roads were clear enough to get here. And it was only a few seconds later that they said, we're going back to Feather River Hospital. And my heart sank, because why would we go back into this fire? We pull into the hospital parking lot, and there's tons of personnel, and you think, this is over, we're, we're gonna be okay. It wasn't too long after that that the sheriff caravan had come up. They said, all right, we can evacuate people. We were loading up 10 and 12 patients to a van and getting everybody out. I looked out the back window as flames were all around me again. It's just fire in front of the ambulance. It's just fire. We didn't think that we were going to make it out all over again, that we made it all day, and this is the part where we die. It's just sheer, sheer terror. And we keep going. She guns it, and boom. It was like you broke through a wall, and all of a sudden, there's no fire. It was a blue sky. It just felt like this weight lifted off of you, Say, you know, we're out. We're out. When people face life or death situations, they go into survival mode. It's not until afterwards that the true impact of what they've gone through hits them. I got a phone call from a gentleman, and he said that he was with Heather, and he was calling to let me know that they were safe. All I could remember telling him was, thank you. I just remember it was just overwhelming. When I met up with my wife, gave a big hug to each other, at that point, we just started crying. We just felt so blessed to be able to be together. I don't know why or how, but I do know that every single part of our group at that house played a role in all of us being here today. When you all work together and you focus on surviving and what you have to do to live, you just do it. When wildfires break out, sparks can fiercely fly in all directions, often igniting everything in the fire's path. So it's no wonder that when the authorities call to evacuate, the public usually responds. But sometimes wildfires move so rapidly that they're difficult to outrun. Thankfully, our heroes are running in while others are running out. Tamara and the others from Feather River Hospital had survived the most harrowing experience of their lives. But through the smoke and ash, they found an inner strength and an incredible will to survive. I'm at Chloe Court. This is where moments I thought I was gonna die and where I also realized that I was gonna live. I watched as next door, this house was completely standing. I saw it catch fire and I saw it burn. You can see how close it came to that house. I think that paradise is going to stay strong as a community. I think that you could take a lot away from people, but you can't take away their spirit and their unitedness. And we're a really small community here that I feel is very strong and will rebuild. Desiree and Christopher Borden were able to escape the fire and made it to a nearby town, Chico. It wasn't until later that they learned how important their home had been in so many people's survival. I got a text message saying, is this your home? And she sent me a picture of our mailbox with our last name on the top of it. And she said, your home saved our lives. And I wanted to think. And I immediately started crying. I got chills on my whole body because it doesn't matter 
what was in the home that was our possessions. There's no possession worth more than those people's lives. The city of paradise will forever be impacted by that fateful wildfire. But thanks to the true hearts of the heroes in that community, their amazing stories of survival will always be remembered. The heroic efforts of Tamara and her group saved the Borden's home, but not everyone was as lucky. So much of Paradise was devastated by the campfire. A team of disaster recovery specialists were some of the first people to assist in the recovery of Paradise. They immediately began with the Feather River Hospital. This is where the bulk of the fire damage to the hospital happened. The cardiology, neurology burned completely down. In order to start rebuilding, you have to get everything that's been damaged inside the hospital out. We're emptying all of their medical equipment, all of their biomedical equipment, IT equipment, their consumables, emptying all those out, cleaning them, and storing them in off-site locations. Anything that can be salvaged is sent to a special facility set up for cleaning and decontamination. Over here, we clean contents before um, it goes into the ozone using chemicals by hand. This is the ozone room. It deodorizes furniture contents and helps get rid of that smell from a fire damage. The most rewarding part of my job is seeing the look on people's faces when we restore their lives back to a little bit of normalcy from what it was. The people of Paradise, California, have always prided themselves on their sense of community. But after going through the most heart-wrenching experience of their lives, the bonds they share now are even stronger. And those enduring connections are what give these heroes the resiliency and strength to move on and recover. Sheldon Yellen brought Tamara, Dr. Russell, and Officer Wilkie back to Feather River Hospital to reflect on their experience. This is your hometown, and you've seen probably what is the worst that you've ever seen in this area. It is. How do you feel? I see uh, a, a definitely a different town that will never be the same. You know, it's just kind of taking it uh, one week, one year at a time, so. You were able to bring hope to a family. You allowed the human spirit to come through and to, to help others in need. That's why I say that I don't feel like a hero because we're not unique. Everybody was in this situation. Everybody did really heroic things. There's so many amazing people. We're all in this together and I think that's somewhat comforting to have a group of people that are going through the same thing and understand what you're feeling. And what would you say to the first responders given the opportunity? I thought I had respect for you know, the first responders, what they do, but really going from a doctor to a firefighter for just a couple hours and, and that intensity, um, I just hats off to, to all of them. Prior to the fires here in Paradise, the community and the communities around here needed you. Now more than ever, the people of these communities need you. We're not going anywhere. And that is the definition of a hero. I leave knowing that the three of you are building a foundation for a better day in paradise here. Strength and hope can be born from tragedy. We learned that here. We also learned that the campfire was California's most destructive wildfire on record. But that's not all it's going to be remembered for. It will be remembered for the heroes, for those brave individuals to whom we owe a great deal of gratitude. I'm Ginger Z. Thank you so much for watching.